Welcome, everyone. My name is Jasmine Gutierrez, and I am the Small Business and Workforce Coordinator in, over in the Department of Economic Development. So we are excited to have you here today to learn about our partnership with FUDA, our provider of exceptional food vendor services here at New City Hall. So today's event is an opportunity for Fort Worth food businesses to discover how you all can get involved in this initiative to have your business here at New City Hall. But before we kick off the program, we want to go over some housekeeping and safety items. So I'll turn it over to Greg Wingate, who's going to give us our safety briefing today. Thank you. Good afternoon, and thanks for being here. We're excited to have you all here. If I can just add some thanks to Jasmine. She's already introduced herself and her volunteers for setting up this room. And the facilities team, they're not here, but uh, they set up the room too. Jasmine Lamelli, she's somewhere here so we're about security and our marshals as well. You've probably seen some of the marshals circulating here and then our IT team for getting us all set up here. So uh, thank you all for being here. We appreciate you being here. We're glad you're here. We're glad to, we're going to give you a little tour if you want to of uh, the lower level and this level. We anticipate a great meeting and we're so glad you're here. Thank you, Greg. All righty, now for the fun part. Before we get into the presentation, I do want to take the time to welcome our city council member, Michael Crane, who oversees District 3. Thank you. Thanks for being here, Greg. I appreciate your saying, uh, if you have to pee, go to purple, and if there's an emergency, run toward an exit sign. <laughs> Got it? 20, 10 seconds. Hey, <laughs> Thanks y'all for being here. Michael Crane, I have the honor of serving on the city council and I'm apologies a little bit dressed the way I am today, but since y'all mostly, I think are all small businesses, you'll understand you're probably pulled in 19 different directions and have to do wear 19 different hats, doing 19 different things plus every single day. Same thing for me. I had two, uh, twin, my twin daughters turned 16. So I had to run them to Stephenville cause that's the closest appointment I could get to get them a license. So that was a, a fun morning for me, but thanks uh, for being here. Appreciate what y'all do. Um, when we, how many, this is their first time into this building. Raise your hand. All right, this is like my fifth time in the building. So if you're confused about where things are, don't be, we're all still figuring it out. But when this building was purchased and as we went through the process, one of the things that we talked about, especially a vision for, the, for this council and make a priority is that you had broad-based opportunities uh, for everyone here. And that meant for, depending on what the contractors were, what we needed, et cetera, also the food and the choices and the other things that all of our employees and visitors had, uh, were able to, to do and, and, and get. So I'm excited to kick this off for you. I won't talk longer because there's more substantive pieces of this. I just wanted to welcome you all to your city hall and hopefully that all of y'all will play some sort of role in everything that we're doing next and uh, build your business and, and create opportunities for you and your family and the uh, choices and everything else. But I'm proud that y'all are here and thanks for letting me speak to you for a minute. I appreciate it. Thank y'all. Thank you. Good luck to the rest of the Christina Rose. All right. Thank you, council member uh, Crane. On the other hat, so. Yes, go take care of those, those girls. All right, um, so good afternoon, everybody. Um, my name is Christina Brooks. And I have the distinct pleasure of um, partnering and working closely with uh, the gentleman that you'll hear from next, our, uh, Robert Stearns, our Director of Economic Development here with the city. Our department really supports uh, the work of economic development, focusing in on uh, business equity and business equity firms in our marketplace and making sure that they have uh, great opportunities to participate in city contracting. And so this is one of those opportunities to kind of bring um, a showcase uh, on, a, on a regular basis of all the different cultures uh, and the food um, that is representative of true Fort Worth. And we have an opportunity to bring that right into the building. Uh, and, and so our department will enjoy uh, providing support services to you. Um, as a food vendor, um, we hope that everyone um, fills out the application and, and uh, gets on that list uh, to become a, a vendor. But we'll support you. Any questions that you have about uh, the process once you become a vendor, any issues that you may encounter along the way um, in the contract execution, um, our department is going to be there to support you. So 
we are truly excited that uh, you all chose to be here today. Um, I am, a, I guess I, you could say I'm a foodie. I'm the mother of, uh, married mother of five kids, um, two of them boys that ate us out of house and home. So I, I know a little bit about food. Um, and so I am looking forward uh, to tasting a little bit, just a little bit uh, every week, all of the changing cultures, uh, stories that go behind some of the recipes that will be um, stirred up in this building. Um, I'll be enjoying looking at that uh, on a weekly basis and um, tasting it. So uh, that's me. I want to now turn it over to uh, my esteemed colleague, Mr. Robert Stearns, Director of Economic Development. Hey. Thank you, Christina. I, I sometimes feel I'm in the wrong line of work. I, I saw Councilmember Crane come in with his shorts. I'm like, that's really the work that I should be doing. But I'm here within this. Uh, so again, I want to thank you all for uh, coming out this afternoon uh, and joining us to learn about this exciting opportunity. Now, I, I think it's a testament to this overall program that we had this event totally sold out, you know, in about a week and a half. But as you all know, sometimes you sell tickets, sometimes they show, sometimes they don't. So I'm appreciative of the fact that you all not only registered for the event, but showed up because then that shows your dedication. And I think it's those people that show up for the opportunities are the ones that are going to be able to take advantage of the opportunity. So thank you for being here. Uh, you know, many people like to think when they think about economic development, they think, you know, our focus is just on the large corporations and the big jobs. That's all we do. That's all we focus on. Uh, but Fort Worth has long been an advocate for small businesses and small business development. Uh, we have a business assistance center at the James E. Gwynn campus that's been in existence for over 20 years. We had a small business grant program at the height of the pandemic uh, that assisted over 1,600 small businesses and nonprofits. We partnered with Christina Brooks and her team in bringing uh, CDFI Fort Worth, a community development financing institution to the city to support uh, funding opportunities for our small businesses. We have our Fort Worth business plan competition. I think we have a couple of our competitors here uh, from the event. Uh, and then most recently, we had a grant program to support uh, the small businesses that were impacted by the Sandman explosion, the hotel downtown just recently reopened. So when you think about what the Fort Worth, what the city's commitment is to our small businesses, understand that there are a broad number of opportunities and things that we have done. And this just represents another opportunity to provide a support system for you all. So why are we here today? I mean, Christine talked about it. Um, you know, we, we've been in City Hall for about a month and a half or so. Uh, and I kind of constantly checking the food app when I come down here probably two or three times a week. But as, as I coming down, like, you know, where, where are more of our Fort Worth companies that I, I'm not recognizing some of these names. I mean, the companies we have are great, not, nothing against those companies, but we've said, this is really an opportunity to elevate our Fort Worth companies, to give them a chance uh, to be a part of this opportunity here at New City Hall. And it really ends up being a win-win for both of us. So it gives our local Fort Worth companies an opportunity to have a new customer base that you can tap into without having to get into a lot of new overhead. So that's a positive for you and a positive for us because we don't have to get in the car and drive out somewhere to go find different options to eat. Uh, and it gives us an opportunity to support you. So again, I think this is a great opportunity, a great win-win for us to support you or for you to support us. Uh, I'm about as much of a foodie as Christine is. I like to eat as you you couldn't tell, I like to eat. Uh, and so I'm really looking forward to the different options uh, that you all are gonna bring to the table uh, and being able to take advantage of that and, and really share that, not only with City Hall, but the, but the rest of the community as well. So thank you all again for the time that you spent. Uh, I think it's gonna be good. I know it's a little warm in here, uh, but I think it's gonna be a very helpful and informative uh, afternoon. So I'll take it all in and I look forward to sampling uh, more uh, different options in food here fairly soon. All right. Thank you all. And now please help me welcome Anna Banky and Natalie Sharp with FUDA. Hello, everyone. How are y'all doing today? So you give us one second. We're just going to turn to the right page so we can see what y'all see right now. 
I'm going to introduce myself first. My name is Anna Banky. I work with Restaurant Partnerships uh, in the Texas region for FUDA. Um, and Natalie? My name is Natalie Sharp. I'm the account executive for FUDA here in DFW. Nice to meet you. I'm the one who you'd be working with the most, so memorize this beautiful face, all right? <laughs> awesome. And then clicker here, right? All right. So how did FUDA start? Uh, food has been around since 2011. We're across almost 30 different markets right now, with DFW being one of our largest. We have about 40 different corporate locations, but we don't only work with corporate locations. We work with government buildings and also hospitals as well, so you get a little healthy mix of everything. The reason why it started was um, in Chicago. Our founder figured out that he was kind of sick of the lunch options that he had in his two-block radius, and he wanted to figure out a way to actually bring in more restaurants and more flavors to try a couple of things. So they started asking people to come in and then started a business out of it. So we work with 1,500, for over 1,500 customers with FUDA right now. Some of the largest ones that we work with in DFW are Southwest Airlines, T-Mobile, Louis Vuitton, Goldman Sachs, um, but like I said, over 40 different locations. And that includes government buildings as you guys are in today. Um, so actually, long time ago, all the way back in 2018, pre-pandemic, if anyone remembers those days, we started out in Fort Worth, um, I'm sorry, not in Fort Worth City Hall, in Houston City Hall, down in Houston. So we have a Houston team as well who's been doing this for a lot longer than we have. Um, and then in 2023, we opened up in Dallas City Hall. Uh, so we've been there for over a year now. Um, it's almost two years now, um, starting in February next year. Um, and then this year, we opened up at Fort Worth City Hall when this building started to be built out, they knew that they wanted to give their employees and the council members and everyone who worked in this building some options for food without having to deal with crazy Texas weather, uh, crazy Texas traffic. And so we actually set up in the lobby Monday through Friday um, from 11 to 2 o'clock. Alrighty, so going over some of our restaurant partners here, we do strive to have the best restaurants um, as part of our partnership. Some of the things that we look for when we're bringing on new restaurants are having a good website. We want to see that everybody is really being able to communicate back and forth, mainly to help out Natalie here. Um, we like people who can talk back and forth through email to make sure that we can confirm events and make sure everything's running smoothly. Um, all We also look for really good menus. And one of the things here is that the food does need to be held for two hours or three hours, depending on the corporate site. So we like to see people who develop a menu that's going to maybe have something that can hold for that two to three hour time period without going bad. Um, so one of those things that we usually try to avoid is pizza. But if you're an Italian restaurant, we usually tell them maybe we can do pasta instead. Um, same thing with French fries. We haven't been able to master French fries quite yet for our restaurant. So usually striving away from that and we'll say, why don't we offer a bag of chips instead? So these this doesn't necessarily need to be something that's on your daily menu. It could be something that's kind of created for the FUDA program so that you can still get your name out there and introduce yourselves to new corporate facilities, but just something to think about. Missing anything there. Good? That's awesome. Alrighty, and then talking about our pop-ups, um, pop-up is the bread and butter of our FUDA program. So it is the way that we started and it's the way, did it go? Oh, sorry about that. There you go, there's pop-up. Um, so it's usually a two to three hour pop-up, so to speak. And it, I like to tell people to think of it as almost a mini food court inside of the corporate facility or government building, restaurant, um, hospital. And the way that we're able to do this is through partnering with restaurants. So we would ask y'all to actually come in and serve during that two to three hour time period. This is all rotated as well. So you're not necessarily always going to the same f facility. And if anything, it's something better for you because we get more exposure, more availability throughout the city. So like I said, we have those 40 different corporate sites and we like to kind of cycle you through there to get your name out there to more than just one place. Awesome. And then when we're talking about the actual pop-up setup, we offer, um, it will, we provide you at least 12 feet of table space, access to running water, Wi-Fi, electricity, tablecloths, sneeze guards, and then we'll also have a digital menu board showcasing who you are and what you're serving. In terms of everything that you are responsible for, it starts with the heating, 
Um, so usually we don't require anything that's super fancy or high tech. Usually just wire racks and sternos are totally fine with us. If you have chafing dishes, those are even better, but it's required. Um, but even if you want to plug in and have an electric warmer, that's also doable as well. Um, we do also expect that you bring at least two people to the time of the event. And the reason for that is not just a food role, it's a health and safety role because there is payments being collected. So ideally one person for serving and the other person is collecting payments. One thing to note with this setup is that there is no cooking allowed on site. That's one of the main reasons why fried food doesn't do super well, um, because it needs to be pre-prepared at your facility, temped there, and then you carry it over here and make sure it's still you know, outside of that temperature danger zone, and then you serve the food. Nice. So not only do we have our pop-up food events, which like Anna said, that's our bread and butter. That's actually going to be 95% of our food of business here in DFW. But we do have a little bit of catering that we can do as well. Um, unfortunately, we do ask that if you are a pop-up restaurant, um, you do catering as well. And if you're a catering restaurant, you do pop-up as well. We don't like to just have people for catering and just have people for pop-up. We want to have people who do both with our food program. These catering programs can work in a few ways. The most common way is, um, for instance, Louis Vuitton today had a serving catering program. So what does that look like? Louis Vuitton contacted me and they said, Natalie, we want 75 people to be fed at $14 per person. We would discuss a menu, you and me. We would decide, hey, let's bring two to three entree options, two to three side options, enough for 75 people, right? And then they're going to go through the line and you're going to help serve the food. You're going to help portion out the food because who's been to a wedding or a buffet where someone decides that is a lot of salmon. I want all the salmon for myself, so I'm going to put five pieces of salmon on my plate, right? But if you're bringing food for 75 people, you want to make sure that all 75 people get fed, right? So you're going to be there to help serve and portion out everything to make sure that everyone gets fed the exact same portions. Um, does that make sense? Awesome. And it's going to talk about the other catering option we have. So this is the pretty standard drop catering order. We get the order about seven days in advance, and that order is confirmed with you in your restaurant. Um, you are responsible for actually doing the delivery portion of it. So you would have a 30-minute window to actually drop it off inside of the facility. Um, you can set it up if you want to, but doesn't require you guys to bring any additional sternos most of the time. Correct. Correct. Right. Um, and then you get paid out on the event. So pretty seamless. One thing to note with this is that these orders are given to our pop-up partners. So we do ask that you be a partner with, in pop-up as well as in drop catering so that everybody can get a little pick of the puzzle. Absolutely. And something that's really exciting, something that we already started in Houston is delivering for certain accounts. Um, and we're looking to incorporate that um, here up in DFW by the end of this year, beginning of next year as well. Um, and now I'm going to go to basic requirements of what it takes to be a food of pop-up restaurant because I know that is the real reason why y'all are here. So Natalie, what do I need to do to be a part of your program? Number one is documentation. Documentation is always where it starts, right? Paperwork is always where it starts. And Ms. Anna is going to go over documentation a little bit more in detail um, in our few other slides down, the, down this presentation. But just to give you a basics, we require a food service permit, um, either a surf safe certification or a food handler certification, and a health inspection report for your kitchen. Um, once again, Anna said food is going to provide you the tables, the tablecloths, the sneeze guards, so you don't have to worry about bringing those. Um, food will provide those for you. Uniforms is a great way to do free marketing for your restaurant, right? When you're entering these buildings and you have your logo somewhere on your shirt clearly displayed, that is you putting out your brand to those folks, right? So uniforms are very important to us. We ask that you wear your brand somewhere on um, the people who are doing the FUDA events. Um, that doesn't just have to be the shirt, it can be a hat, whatever works best for you. It could be an apron. Um, and then just to look professional, right? So if you uh, take our councilman, for example, um, our first councilman would probably not be accepted for a FUDA event, funny enough. But this lovely gentleman is looking professional. He's looking great. He would be accepted. Um, that just means, you know, um, pants, no shorts, closed toe shoes. That's not just a FUDA rule. That's a health department rule, you know? Um, and then something to keep your hair back, either a hairnet or a hat, uh, will work great. As Anna stated as well, we require that two people be at each of our FUDA events. Once again, that's not just a FUDA rule, that's a health department rule, right? Because it'd be impossible if you're doing 75 people 
in about two hours, you would have to take the payment, wash your hands, serve the food, take the payment, wash your hands, serve the food. And that would just get exhausted. And there'd be no way anyone could do that. Right. So that's why we ask that two people come, one person to take the payment, one person to serve the food. If we are prepping you for over 85 meals, we actually ask that you bring three people to those events because getting over um, 85 meals in a period of two to three hours would just be quite impossible for two people to do by themselves. So we want to do three people for those events. Um, that is just to get people through the line faster. Um, organized space. All of our tablecloths go to the ground, which means that you can use underneath the table for personalized storage, um, extra food storage. We just want the setup to look professional and neat. Sometimes, you know, you go to these restaurants and you see clutter everywhere and then you start thinking about health concerns, things like that. So just making sure that when people look at your setup, they recognize that this is a person who's clean and organized, right? Um, another thing that's very important for food events is that all of your food must be served in to-go containers. Here we set up in the lobby on the first floor. Now imagine if I'm a sixth floor worker at Fort Worth City Hall and I go down to the first floor lobby and I get my food in a paper plate how well is that paper plate going to hold up me carrying it all the way from the lobby all the way up to the sixth floor, weaving through hallways? Mm -mm, it's not going to hold up, right? I'm going to drop something. Knowing me, I would drop something. Um, and then two, my food probably won't be hot by the time I get up to the sixth floor. That's why we require that everything has to have a lid on it um, so it stays hot and no one spills anything. And then the last rule is, of course, following all health department procedures. That's not just a food rule health department rule, right? So any rule that you have for you and your kitchen, just apply those same rules to the food events. Now, what do you need to bring to these food events? I made you a cool checklist. You can use this checklist as a basis to make your own checklist, or you can print this out for you and your team. Something that I want to point out for your checklist is, let me turn so you can see the checklist, that'd be important, um, is something to keep the food warm during transit. And if you look, at those camper boxes and next to those camper boxes, you're going to see a cart. Some of these folks um, in these buildings, for instance, Southwest Airlines, you load in the uh, you unload in the loading dock, but then you serve food up in the third floor. It would be very hard for you to physically carry all of your food from that loading dock up to the third floor. I highly, highly, highly recommend that you guys buy a cart or something with wheels on it. So that way you can roll your food instead of carrying it. Um, that's going to eliminate you and your team spilling your food all over the floor at these sites. It's also going to eliminate someone hurting their back or hurting their knees, right? We don't, we just want to make sure everyone's staying healthy. So something with wheels to carry that food, something to keep your food warm during service. So there's electronic warmers in that photo. There's also uh, sternos with uh, chafing dishes. The most important thing is that you keep the food warm during service because that is what people are going to be eating, right? So you can either use one or the other, or you can use both depending on what setup you guys want to do. Um, some of our sites do have a no open flame policy. Um, at those sites, we'll provide four electronic warmers for you. If you need more than four, you have to bring your own. Um, let's say you're a Tex-Mex restaurant and you're like, Natalie, four warmers is great, but can I bring my nacho cheese warmer because I want to do some nachos per person? Absolutely, you can. Just plug in that cheese warmer, that soup warmer into our sites. The site directions um, I make by hand for each of my sites, and I'll tell you how many electricity plugs that we have for you to utilize as well. I try to be really detailed in those things, which I'll go over a little bit later. And then checkout process. Okay, Natalie, how do I charge these people for their food? Fuda provides a POS app that you can use um, for these Fuda events that you have to use for these Fuda events. It is an app that can be used at any, um, any Apple product, so iPhones or iPads. Um, the easiest, easiest way is to go on Facebook Marketplace or something like that. Google iPad, get an iPad that's cheap. Just have that iPad for all of your FUDA events. Doesn't have to be the latest generation. You can go six, seven generations back. Um, and then just download the FUDA app on there. The one thing that FUDA does require you to purchase is a FUDA card reader. Unfortunately, we are not uh, partnered with um, PayPal or um, Square, it has to be the FUDA card reader. And so when you're interested in being a FUDA vendor and you apply to us, that's something that you do have to buy and bring with you to every single FUDA event, as well as a small bank. So some of these um, places will be no cash and some of these places will specifically ask you to bring a small bank for cash. We ask that if you do have to bring a small bank with cash, just about $50 in change does the trick for the folks who don't have their card or Apple Pay or Google Pay 
our card reader will use Google Pay, Android Pay, Apple Pay, though I've never seen anyone use Android Pay in my whole entire life, just Google Pay and Apple Pay, the more I think about it. But it has that function for you, just in case someone comes out of the blue with that. Um, and then, of course, bringing things like your to-go boxes, your plasticware, those are things that you and your restaurant are responsible for bringing. Um, now, I am going to drop this on the floor and drop it. One more, folks. Technical difficulties. <laughs> Marketing. Okay. Let me tell you the best thing about Fuda. We market for you, and you're allowed to market for yourself any way that you want. First thing that is going to do is they have an app, not just for our restaurants, but we also have a customer-facing app. Like our councilman mentioned earlier, he checks that app every single time he comes in, right? That app is going to say what restaurants in the building, their menu, their prices, and people who work for that building will be able to see their menus up to a week ahead of time. So they'll be able to see, hey, um, this Tex-Mex restaurant is coming on Thursday, so I'm not going to bring my lunch on Thursday because I know I want some good tacos, nachos, burritos. That's me. I'm a Tex-Mex fanatic. Um, so not only will it send them alerts, they also get email alerts once they sign up through our app. This is yada, yada, yada restaurant. Make sure to check them out. Here's a website to their website, a link to their website. Go check them out outside of Fuda events. So Fuda is going to market for you, as well as we want you to market yourself at Fuda events. That means bring cards, bring flyers. I have a food truck that brings a QR code that shows exactly where their food truck is serving every single day of the week. Really cool. Don't know how they do it, but I love the technology for it. Um, literally anything. I know we were partnered with Fajita Pete's and they brought a flyer with literally every single location of Fajita Pete's throughout DFW. Anywhere that you want to market yourself, please just bring them with you and pass it out. I saw an Italian mom pop restaurant who only had about five people come in per night. Triple that in a series of one month just by, hey, we're with this, work this, come over here, come to our restaurant. This is where we're located. So don't be afraid to market yourself at all. It's really what makes Fudo really, really cool. Awesome. Scheduling. All right, Natalie, I am convinced you've convinced me you are a gift from God and I'm going to sign up my restaurant. How do I get scheduled? So we have a scheduler, Ms. Kayla, um, who helps um, using an AI generated tool to help schedule all of our restaurants. You'll receive an email from Kayla that says, hey, we want your availability um, for the next month. We schedule all of our restaurants and all of our sites one month at a time. So we'll give your schedule one month at a time, and we'll also get your availability every single month. In the, um, form, in the scheduling form, which you have an example of in your um, sheet of packets, um, it will say, what's your name? What's your restaurant's name? What days of the week can you work? And then... Um, what days can you not work whatsoever? Let's say you're a restaurant that has a couple of younger employees and they have a bunch of graduations coming up and you just know you won't be able to work at all that week. That's okay. Say, I can work Monday through Thursday, but I can't work this week because I know my staff's going to be busy. We understand. We understand. That's also why we ask for one month at a time is so if things fluctuate, we'll fluctuate with you. And then you'll get your schedule and it will say what sites you're going to, what the start time of those events are, what the setup time of those events are, and we'll also give you a prep number to follow. So for instance, um, if I was a restaurant and I got my schedule for next month, it might say, you're going to Fort Worth City Hall on September 8th. Uh, the time to set up here is 10 to 10.15. The service time here is 11 to 2. And your prep number here is uh, 55 to 65 people. That might be what it looks like. Um, and so you'll get your schedule one month at a time. All right. Um, something else that's important about schedules is the average of events restaurants are getting per month is around eight to 10 events per month right now. It's about two to three events per week currently. Um, why is that? Why are people not getting more than that? Well, number one, we got about 40 sites. Right now, I currently have about 78 different restaurants in our program. Um, so some of our sites are Monday through Friday, like Fort Worth City Hall. But as you know, after the pandemic, a lot of people do hybrid schedules. Some of our sites are only Tuesdays and Thursdays. Some of our sites are Tuesday through Thursday. And Friday is definitely the slowest day of our week because some of our sites are Monday through Thursday. Most of the time, if people are going to be open, it'll be Tuesday and Thursday. So when I'm filling out that availability sheet, I would make sure to have at least those two days open. Awesome. Okie dokie. Point of sales. So we take payment at these events, right? Something that is really, really cool is that some of our sites have subsidy programs. That means that the employer pays for a portion of the employee's meals. 
Um, T-Mobile, they pay for $14 worth of their employees' meals. Southwest Airlines, they pay for half off of their employees' meals. Um, some places do 20% off, some places do 30% off, and some places only do 4 or $5 off. It doesn't matter because if it's the employer paying the money for part of the meals, the employees are more incentivized to come and get food from you. Um, how this works is they'll have a QR code in their app that they'll show to you during checkout. So when you check people out, you'll be able to press the discount button, open up your camera, scan that little QR code. It will automatically um, take off that portion and you're still gonna get paid the full amount. It's just the employer's gonna pay for part of the meal and then the employee's gonna pay for the rest of it. Something else that we have in our program is guarantees. And we do this because we wanna pay for food and labor costs no matter what for y'all. So let's say you're doing a two hour long event. Almost all of our two hour long events are a $600 guarantee. Um, $600 guarantee means that if it's a weird day at the office and you only make $400 worth of sales, then you'll get $200 extra dollars, um, for that event on top of what you did in sales that day. So that way, when you're walking away, you're not in the red for any of these food events. We do this because we care about small businesses. A lot of these um, restaurants that we're partnered with are mom and pop businesses, and that's what makes food so great. Um, and we want to make sure that we're paying for at least the food and labor costs for that. All right, Ms. Anna's going to come back to you and talk to you a little bit about commission. This is the not fun part for me, but this is the commission bit. So we are a third party, so we do take commissions based on food sales. So FUDA will take 25% of net food sales over $1,000. If you make less than $1,000 at the time of the pop-up, we drop the commission rate to 20%. So if you don't make as much, we don't take as much but there are no sign-up fees, no monthly fees, and everything is non-binding, so you're not locked into any time-length contract to actually have to continue to work with FUDA. It's all up to you. Now, Natalie, how do I get paid? This is a great question. FUDA will pay you um, two weeks after that event because of those things like guarantees and subsidies. We have to go collect the money and then we give the money to you, right? Um, so if you did an event with us, this week, let's say you did an event with us today. You will get paid not next Thursday, but the Thursday after it. They're always on Thursdays. Don't ask me why they chose Thursday of the day of the week, but they chose Thursday out of the day of the week. Um, let's say you did multiple events in one week. So let's say you did an event yesterday, today, and tomorrow. You'll get paid for all three of those events, not next Thursday, but the Thursday after it. Um, you'll also get a detailed breakdown invoice of um, each event that you do. And we'll say, here's the amount of sales that you did. Here's the commission. Um, here's your tax. Um, tax is 100% remitted by the restaurants, which means we pay you your tax. You go and you report your tax to the government. Does that make sense? Slay. Okay, great. Now that we've talked about money, our expectations. This is the most important slide that you're going to see today. In fact, if anyone has a pen, go ahead and circle this slide. Okay, this is the most, most important slide I'm going to go over for y'all. Number one is committing to your availability. That means try really hard not to cancel any of your events. We have some sites that have some very high strict security and they want to know who's coming into their building up to a week ahead of time. And I have to let them know who's coming into their building up to a week ahead of time. If you have to cancel your event, give me at least a 48 hour heads up. And that is a business 48 hour heads up. So if you have to cancel an event on Monday and it's Friday, is not acceptable. You gotta tell me by at least Thursday, okay? Um, so 48 hour heads up. If you cancel less than 48 hours, it can result in a fine of up to $150. I don't like taking anyone's money, but it's the only way I can hold people accountable. All right? Um, if you um, are uh, doing a family emergency or something, I'm not a heartless person, I promise. I won't take the $150 if there's a death in the family. I won't do that to y'all, okay? Most, uh, second most important thing is to press confirm. So that way you will get a email the day before your event. So if I had an event tomorrow at 11 o'clock, I would get an email today at 11 o'clock. And on the email will be a huge giant blue button that says confirm event. It's very hard to miss. Please, please, please press that blue button before two o'clock the day before your events. If you don't press that blue button before two o'clock the day before your events, you will get a call from me or my coworker, Ethan, or my scheduler, Kayla, just asking and making sure that you are confirmed for tomorrow. If we can't get a hold of you before five o'clock the day before, we will take you off that event for the next day because once again, these places high security, I need to make sure that those restaurants that I'm saying are going there are going there. 
All right, so make sure you press those two buttons. Um, I make site directions by hand for every single one of my events. These site directions are detailed. I am a woman of detail. Look at my eye makeup. I'm a woman of detail. Um, basically, I'm going to tell you where to park, where to unload, what time you should get there. Uh, if there's security, do you need to have an ID with you? Um, how many outlets we have? The water. Where's the water? Where can I get my water for my chafing dishes or electronic warmers? I'm going to tell you that. Is there an ice uh, machine provided? Yes or no. Some of our sites do have ice machines that you can get ice from. Some of them don't. Um, and not only am I going to break it down for you with words, I'm going to break it down for you by pictures because I just don't want to leave any room for interpretation. So I'm going to I go through every single time we open a site. I take pictures as if I was one of y'all going into these sites and getting to where I need to set up. So I'll show you the picture of the outside where you're supposed to park, how to enter the building, how to get through the building, who to talk to, what to do, yada, yada, yada. Please, please, please don't throw all my work away and just read the site directions because I promise you 90% of your questions are going to be in those site directions. The number one complaint that I get from folks is that they didn't start selling on time. Please get to the site about 45 minutes to an hour beforehand of when service starts. But Natalie, I can like set up in 10 minutes. I know you can't. I know you're a good, fast, hard worker, but sometimes there's traffic. Sometimes these places um, are surrounded by um, a car accident and you just got to give yourself leeway to get around there. Uh, sometimes there's strict security. So I need to go and check in with security before I can even enter the building. Sometimes there's security before the parking lot. Sometimes there's security as soon as you enter the parking lot. Sometimes there's security as soon as you enter the building. These places have, have strict security sometimes. So that is why we're giving you 45 minutes to an hour to get set up. How can I lose my guarantee, Natalie? Two ways. One, you don't start selling on time. Two, you don't bring enough food. Let me break that down a little bit more for you. So these guarantees that I told you about, $600 usually. Um, if I have the site saying my employees go on break from 11 to 11.30 and you guys start selling food at 11.15, that says, oh my gosh, you missed a huge portion of my employees by just that 15 minutes. That's why they have the right to take away the guarantee if you run late. Secondly, um, let's say I told you to bring enough meals for 65 people. It gets you around 700, 800 bucks, right? Let's say something happens. Maybe you dropped the food on the way in. Maybe you just couldn't prep the amount of food that you wanted to. And you only sell about 30 meals. You're sitting about $400. That means that you won't get the other $200 from that guarantee because you ran out of food before you could even hit the $600. Does that make sense? Awesome. These are very important things that I stress. Um, if you are running late, give me and my team a call. Um, we have a Google Voice line number. Um, that means that I have access to it and all my coworkers have access to it. So if you are running late and you let us know and we let the site know, most of the time they understand. Oh, okay, I understand. No worries. Thanks for giving me a heads up. That's being a good communicator. The better a communicator you are, the more people like you, the more people want you to come back, right? People care about how you make them feel. Sometimes they don't care about your food as much as they care about how you make you feel. I'm sure as restaurant owners, y'all know that I was a restaurant manager for three years at Papacitos. I understand exactly what you guys go through. Um, and then keeping the space clean and organized. Was there anyone who was a Girl Scout back in the day? So you know you keep a place better than what you found it, right? Same with Fuda. Um, we ask that you wipe the tables off before you leave. Um, I suggest buying uh, one of those huge food safe hand wipes uh, from Amazon or from the restaurant supply company. They got one of those big tubs that cost about $30 and it will last you about three months. You bring those food safe wipes to you at the end of service, you clean off the table. There's always going to be a dust pram and a broom next to you to sweep off the big pieces, okay? Just leave the place good. If it happens that you left a place messy and the restaurant who comes after you sends me a picture, hey, look at this restaurant, they left the place a mess, I will contact you, we'll have a conversation and it can result up to a fine of $50. Once again, that's the only way I can keep people accountable for some reason is money. I don't know. All right, Miss Anna is going to come up to you and talk to you more about your documentation. In order to get started, we do require a couple of standard documents. So the first thing that we'll ask for is the FUDA application, which actually all of y'all have on your seats too. In that packet, you're just agreeing to the commissions, asking for some contact information and financial addresses. Um, on top of that, we're going to ask for your food permit, your tax license, a food manager's certificate, like a serve safe. And then final bit is the certificate of insurance. On this policy, we do need there to be at least a million dollars in general liability and then 500,000 in workers' compensation. 
The workers' compensation part is not required by the state of Texas, but it is required by FUDA in order for us to connect you with our corporate facilities. Um, and then also on this COI, we do ask that you also put FUDA as a certificate holder. That's not to say that we're actually part of the insurance policy in any bit. It's just something that we require in order to actually say that we can function with it. All righty, y'all. You guys have made it towards the end. Are you guys excited? I'm going to go over one last slide, and then we're going to do a little bit of Q&A, so that way you can ask me and Anna any questions that you may have, okay? So I have heard Natalie talk, and she is just a fantastic person, and I just want to partner with her and work with her from now on. No problem. What you're going to do is you're going to go to FUDA.com. And on the top of FUDA.com, right-hand side, there's going to be Four Restaurants tab. Click on that Four Restaurants tab. There's going to be a drop-down menu. And you're going to click become a restaurant partner. When you press become a restaurant partner, it's going to ask that you fill out um, a form similar to the forms that you guys see on your on your um, chairs today. And make sure that you notate that you are someone who attended the Fort Worth FUDA vendor. And then you'll submit that paperwork. That paperwork is going to go straight to Miss Anna. Miss Anna is going to go through all the paperwork, make sure everything's correct. If she likes everything that she sees, if everything's good, she'll get in contact with you. And then you'll have blessing of having a one-on-one -on -one meeting with me while I'll basically go over most of the things that we went today but in a little bit more detail to make sure that you're ready to get started with us okay all right it is time for a Q&A and on this Q&A board I see you're gonna be the first one you're also gonna have um uh our uh email addresses go ahead and take a photo of those email addresses so if you need to get in contact with us you can um, Miss Anna's gonna grab that mic and we're gonna go straight to you okay ma'am Yes. So when you have a facility or location that has um, fee parking, how do you handle that? So almost all of our sites currently will um, go ahead and validate your ticket for you. For instance, we do a couple of downtown Dallas buildings like uh, Sachi and Sachi and Team One are in the same building. Um, they validate our parking for us. You just have to make sure you follow the steps on the site directions to validate that ticket. We only have one site currently that I have gone back and forth about three months with, and they refuse to validate our parking, and I apologize greatly for it. I can't do anything about it. I can't convince that client. And that is Goldman Sachs. Goldman Sachs has decided they don't want to validate our tickets. That's okay two options you can do. You can park in their garage and it's going to be about 20 to $30 to park there for the day. Or you can go to the street, get the app. There's usually a parking right outside the building um, and you would just park your car there after you unload. Um, and it's usually only about $5 a day. Now, let me tell you, you usually make over 800 bucks at Goldman Sachs, guaranteed. So I would say $5, $5 is nothing compared to $800. Um, and that's why I try to tell my restaurants is um, just go park on the street because... The, that 20 to 30 bucks parking in their parking garage is a little expensive. But outside of that one site, everyone else validates their ticket. It's a great question. Hi, I have one question for you and one question for the city. Uh, the question for you is, do we set our own pricing or do y'all dictate the pricing that we charge? This is a great question. So when it comes to pricing, we ask that you price the same amount of what's in your store. Why are we asking you this? You guys take a 20% commission. Why would I price the same as what I'm selling in the store? Few reasons. Number one, we're competing with things like Uber Eats, DoorDash, Foodsby, things like that. When we meet with these clients, we're saying that the price that you're paying is the same price that if you went to that restaurant, that's what it would be. So whatever you guys have on your menu, you decide. Um, you're going to bring a condensed version of what you have on your menu. Just price it the same. Um, what I usually suggest for menus is two to three entrees, uh, two to three sides. Um, and then a combo plate. Now, why are we selling things a la carte? For our subsidy program, our subsidy programs that are the highest are about $14, $15. And they are saying that they're going to pay for an employee's meals. So nothing on your menu can be more than $15, about $14.99. Because T-Mobile, PGP Group, these people have a $15 subsidy. They're saying that they want to pay for all of their employees' meals. Nothing on your meal can be more than $15. That does not mean that the price per person cannot be more than that. For instance, if you have a combo plate that's $14.50, and that's what you sell in your store, but you put a dessert and you tell your uh, 
employees that are going to these food events, make sure you sell that dessert. Make sure you're suggesting that dessert to every single person that comes through. Well, that takes it from $14 per person to $17, $18 per person as long as you can upsell things. Um, usually our entrees are priced anywhere from $8 to $12. Combo plates are usually $12 to $14, $14.99. Once again, that's our cap. Um, and then our sides are anywhere from $2 to $6. Desserts are $3 to $6. Okay, and is there someone from the city that can answer a question? Yeah. <laughs> we'll see. see what the question is then we'll direct you to the right person okay so my question is 20 percent is a lot uh will all city offices be asked to order catering through fuda or will they still be able to contact individual restaurants to order catering for any event off like city event or anything like that yeah, there is no mandate that anyone has to utilize food, so it is it is by choice. That's great. Any other questions around here? Okay. And we got two. Miss Anna, one right here. He was first, and then this lady over here. Nico, here first. So, as far as the fees, are are you sticking to that, or is there any room for negotiation? There's no rule for negotiation at now. Um, I don't even have any mandate on the fees. Um, that is what the company has dictated. That is our flat line for every single person who joins. Gotcha. Um, this, this lady was first, and then we'll come over to y'all. One thing to also note with those um, commissions is that that's something that's never going to be raised as well. So a lot of other third parties will go in and say, we're going to give you 15% for three months, and then all of a sudden it's 18, then it's 20, and then, you know, and so on and so forth our rates don't change. It's always going to be the same. So you, there's going to be no surprises down the line if we're like, hey, we're taking 30%. That won't happen with FUDA. I heard you mention, um, or several times you all speak to all of your partners, meaning that you you have um, partners that rotate or, or FUDA vendors that rotate to different sites um would we be able to be proprietary to the city or are you requiring us to rotate to different sites as well yeah so we ask that you do not just um forward city hall but you also be willing to go to other places um and that is for your benefit as well um if you only do forward city hall once again right now it's one vendor a day um for five days of the week so that's only about 25 vendors per month so you would only be in that rotation maybe once or twice a month at most. Um, so we would ask that if you guys want to get the most bang for your buck, that you'd be willing to go to other of our sites. Is that required? We are requiring it. That we are requiring it right now. And you have the. I think I saw a couple of other hands raised over here and one over here. Hi, my name is Nikita Seal. I'm the founder of ZZ's Ice Cream Puffs. So I'm curious, what is the experience like for dessert vendors who are strictly dessert? Yeah, so I'm going to be completely honest with you. Right now, um, our dessert vendors only see about one event every two months, and that is because it is requested by our sites when they want a dessert. Um, so for instance, an event like today would be a good example. Um, the event today, we had a uh, catering that we brought in from one of our food or restaurant partners, Breadwinners. Um, I contacted that um, place, said, hey, can you give me sandwiches and desserts? They said yes. Um, they dropped it off here. Um, this was a drop-off catering today. Um, Louis Vuitton does one drop-off catering for desserts every single month. Um, I rotate that restaurant. Um, and then Southwest Airlines on the occasion asked for a dessert vendor. But I'm going to be completely honest with you. It would not be a lot. Um, we have onboarded dessert um, partners in the past, and they've only gotten about three to four events per year. It's not a lot. I'm going to be completely honest. I'm a, I'm a lady of honesty. I have a couple of questions over here. Our, bre our bread and butter is our, our pop-up program, unfortunately. That is what we're known for. Um, but that's not to say that there are some restaurants that we have that do specific pop-up menus that they don't even offer in their stores just because they like our program. Okay, heard. But it's just the ice cream. Is that correct? Heard. Okay, but it... okay. 
her. I got you. I'll keep I'll keep that in mind, and we can discuss a little bit more in detail. <clears throat> so I have two questions. So, can vendors charge tips, and does that go towards the agent commission amount? That is a great uh, question. Yeah. Uh, did you? Uh, I have another one, but I I can wait for that. Okay. Yeah. So, um, actually, tips are not allowed. Um, we don't have any tips. Um, there's no way to charge tips with our POS system either. Um, now that's to say if there is someone who's very insistent on giving you five bucks, I'm not going to tell you to stand there and argue with them. I would just say, thank you so much and take the money. Um, but it's, there's no way to charge people tips. So there's not even a tipping machine, um, for us to charge people tips. Great question. Okay. And the second one, what are the most successful, um, food vendors that you've seen? What, what do they sell? Absolutely. Great question. So our number um, one restaurant is actually a mom pop barbecue restaurant called P-Dubs Barbecue. They have been voted multiple times for three years in a row, best restaurant that Fuda has. Um, P-Dubs is, is great. They do uh, brisket, uh, sausage links. Um, they do mac and cheese, uh, coleslaw. You know, they're your typical barbecue vendor. Something that I think separates him from some of our other barbecue vendors is number one, he brings music, which I just think that's hilarious. He just puts on some slow jam R&Bs. Um, he chops the brisket per person. So you'll hear that every single time you walk up to his table. Um, and three, he sells his product. He is very personable and he has gotten some big uh, weddings just by being a food vendor and selling himself to some of these folks. So um, he's our number one outside of uh, P-Dubs, fried chicken and Tex-Mex. So barbecue, fried chicken, Tex-Mex seems to be the top three cuisines that folks love here in DFW. Um, and then down the list, there is Mediterranean at number four. Number five tends to be Indian mm -hmm. because we have uh, not just Dallas, Irving, Fort Worth, Arlington. We also have Frisco, Plano, um, Richardson. Frisco, Plano, Richardson, I know is a long drive from here, um, but that's where T-Mobile is, is Frisco. Um, Richardson, we got multiple multi-tenant buildings um, and an NCR account. NCR is the people who do ATM processes. Who else around here? Do you mind passing this over? I wanted to ask the difference between the $1,000 and the 20% and the ability to just do the guarantee and one pop-up. Would you be eligible to do that, or do you still have to do the 1000 versus the guarantee? Because I have a food truck, and I prefer the guarantee. So are you saying that you wouldn't want them to do a thousand dollars you would are over anything over a thousand dollars you would prefer to be at the lower no i want to do it but i'm asking you you said that when you do the um guarantees are around six hundred dollars yes so if they're around six hundred dollars can you explain how you get to the thousand dollars to do the 20 percent if you're only making 600 and if you only made 600 are you still paying 20 percent of 600 yeah absolutely so yes you are the guarantee is not including the um the uh commission so it goes guarantee $600, then commission, uh, what is that, $100, then you get $500 walking away, right, after commission. Um, however, those uh, guarantees are not most of our sites. Most of our sites, you're doing way over the guarantee. Most of our sites, you're doing $700, $800, $900, $1,000, bucks, over 1000 bucks. Southwest Airlines, T-Mobile, NCR, Goldman Sachs, you're almost guaranteed to walk away with over 1000 bucks on those places. Okay. Thank you. Oh, yes, that's good. Great. So I just had a question. Do you get to pick exactly where you go? Like, what happens if you're going to Dallas? And we have a very, very big non-compete in Dallas. Yeah, absolutely. I understand. I have two Chick-fil-A's in our program right now, and I have worked with um, both of them on radiuses. So what we do for some places is we build out a radius. Um, so, for instance, if you say, I can't go more than... Um, a 30 minute drive or you give me a certain amount of feet, I will personally look at what radius that is for you and I will block you off from any site that is not in that radius and I'll just keep you in that radius. Do you have one? Do you mind passing it down? I have two questions. Yeah. Um, do you have a staff member that stays on site that's setting up and what do they do? Absolutely. This is a great question. So currently, the FUDA um, team here in DFW consists of three on-site members and one off-site member. What that means is there's someone who's almost always monitoring the Google line. We have a Google line. Uh, the Google line is accessible to the whole entire FUDA team. So let's say your TV is not working properly or um, 
you uh, are having issues with your card reader, call that Google line. Someone's going to be able to help you. Um, however, I will go with you or my coworker, Ethan, will go with you to your first two FUDA events. After those first two FUDA events, um, there's not someone next to you the whole entire time. There are exceptions to this. Um, you're going to hear me mention them a thousand times, but uh, Southwest and T-Mobile are big, big sites for us. We have a person who works for FUDA at that site. In fact, for Southwest Airlines, we have five of their buildings. So we have five uh, FUDA managers who each operate one building. There's going to be a FUDA member there for you at those two sites. Same with Encore and Sally's Beauty Supply in Denton. It's a little bit far north, but um, they're a good account and they have a cafeteria space with us. Essentially, if we run their cafeteria, which we do at those four sites, there's going to be a FUDA staff member with you no matter what. Um, for the city, is there a cafeteria here already? Uh, no, the, um, their cafeteria is being built out um, right now. Um, it's not operational yet. I'm not sure what their ETA is on that. Does anyone have an answer for that? That's probably going to be so right now for the county chambers up here. We can see that is under construction, but a lot of the infrastructure is good for that cafeteria. So it will probably be September, October next year. Oh, yeah, oh, well, yeah. And then um, are y'all encouraging people to cater with you guys through your vendors and that's also 20%? Absolutely. So I meet with our um, sites. Uh, I do like a quarterly business review, um, me and my boss. We do quarterly business reviews where we talk with our, our partners. We encourage catering. Um, we encourage, obviously, how can we get our food a program that's already there to even a bigger food a program? And then they want to make sure that their people are utilizing the program that they've partnered with as well. So usually our site contact is the head of catering at this place or the head of um, food things. I don't know. People have different job titles. Um, and so they're really encouraged to use the food program if we're inside the building, no matter what. But we understand that you're uh, here. You have pretty much all cafes that you uh, service. Do you ever have events outside where the people can bring their food truck? We do have food truck events every once in a while. And that is not dictated by me. That is dictated by our sites. Um, so, for instance, um, Kubota. I don't know if you guys know that tractor company, Kubota. Um, they had a food truck event um, two times this summer. Most of the time it's during the summertime. Um, and what we do is we place a higher guarantee for you. Um, usually that guarantees around 800 to 1000 bucks, depending on how many people are in the building. Um, because we know it costs more money to run a food truck than it does to just come and bring your food inside the building. Um, and so I would, I actually have a list that I made at the beginning of the summer. I reached out to every single one of my food, uh, food uh, restaurants. Hey, respond to this email with your food truck um, and let me know what days of the week you're available with your food truck. And if I have a food truck event, I reach out to those restaurants and I say, come on, bring your food truck. Some of our sites absolutely love it. I've had about four or five sites do a food truck event somehow, some way. This we had one. Vendors that make it sound with the, any special diets or like be vegetarian or yeah, absolutely. I think this is a great question. So I always suggest to my restaurants to have something that can be vegetarian on your menu somehow, some way. Um, so for instance, if you can just add um, a salad or a rice bowl or um, if you're a Tex-Mex restaurant, usually it's um, veggie tacos. What What's your cuisine type, sir? What's the cuisine type of your restaurant? Uh, actually, I'm here with someone that has a restaurant. Yeah. And I did a barbecue. Barbecue. Yeah. Oh, salads. Most of my barbecue restaurants got salads on their menu somehow, some way. They just don't put any meat on it. But if you want to add meat, it's like an extra three to four bucks. So that way, if someone wants a healthier option, you can just bring the salad leaves and a dressing. Maybe you make the dressing at home. You add a couple of, um, maybe you want to make some grilled veggies, put a little grilled veggies on top. You can do whatever you want with that salad. Um, and then if you are worried about gluten intolerancy, I know that um, that's the second number two allergy that I get asked about is gluten um, sensitivity. With barbecue restaurants, a lot of times they utilize soy sauce in their marinades, right? So barbecue sometimes is um, off the plate for gluten intolerant people. Once again, salads cover that gluten intolerancy most of the time. Um, and then just being knowledgeable about what you use in your food, because you will get asked questions by the people who come up and purchase food from you. What is inside this? Is this inside this? And so 
that is part of the reason why people like the fact that we send the restaurant employees is because they're usually knowledgeable about what goes inside the food. So if um, it's not mentioned on the menu, what exactly is inside of the marinade for a brisket, people can ask. But it is a requirement. Um, I highly suggest it. Honestly, fried chicken and barbecue is the two that I don't require it because they sell so well without a vegetarian option. Everyone else, I almost require it all the time. Sometimes potato. Um, so I've partnered with, with Foodworks before or in Harris Hospital, and they offer, well, they give you this opportunity to use their equipment if we need to. Uh, when I'm frying foods, using warmers to provide a full uh, warming station and everything. Uh, pretty much we just bring the food there, we can cook it there, or we can bring it already prepared. The, just two part, do you have facilities, some facilities that offer that service? And number two, when the city finishes that kitchen, will if we provide, if we be a part of this, will we have the opportunity to use that kitchen and sell in that cafeteria or will still be tabletop in the lobby. So let me tell you a little bit about FUDA's um, permit. Our health department permit is a catering permit. It is not a cooking on site permit. So no matter which site you go to, even Southwest Airlines, T-Mobile's, they have full kitchens that are being utilized by other people who have a permit that can use those things. FUDA does not have that permit. FUDA is, the food is made, the food is brought, the food is served out. That is just our program. Well, so yeah. For us to make sure our food is catering, uh, yeah, you call it. like if they would make they make sure that our people that we transfer them they have what they catering vehicle. It doesn't have to be a catering vehicle. No, it doesn't have to be a catering vehicle. You can use your personal vehicle. I have restaurants who use their personal vehicle. It's just say your food's gonna smell like your vehicle. Your vehicle's gonna smell like you. And you continue. <laughs> hi, I am a dis I'm with a nothing but cakes here in Fort Worth. Oh, hi. And we do a ton of events. Mm -hmm. Um. I'm just wondering, and we are franchise, so we would yes. be one where you would have to map out like Chick-fil-A where we can and can't go. Yeah. Um, but do you ever have two um, restaurants at the same time? So like a one that doesn't serve dessert and one that does serve, like we would cut, like that would help out the other uh, guests over there. Like, yes. does that ever happen? Because our, our little bottlets serve really, really well, especially in offices around two o'clock. Yeah. And everybody yeah. gets a little pink. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so that's why I was just curious if we could ever come on site to some of the places and we don't have like a lunch, but we have the dessert. Yeah, absolutely. So the answer is yes for um, dessert places. Absolutely. Um, and sometimes that does happen. Um, for instance, the same person who catered today did an extra one of those sinful platters to Louis Vuitton with the same restaurant who did, um, who provided the food, right? Yes, absolutely. It's just that the rush, the site has to specifically ask for dessert along with the meal. Sometimes the restaurant who is there might want to do the dessert too. Sometimes the restaurant doesn't have the dessert capabilities. So the answer is yes, it usually is just the site asks for it. But what um, I can do for dessert people um, specifically, um, we have Handel's ice cream with us as well. Um, and what I do is I just let my sites know whenever I get a new dessert partner this is our new dessert partner. Feel free to utilize them and book them with me. Um, and I send that out to communicate that with all of my sites. It's just that sometimes some sites say absolutely yes, and some sites have a little bit extra money, and some of the sites don't. But yes, you can go at the same time. In fact, that brings me to another great question that some of you might have. Okay, what about serving the food at the same time, and I'm not a restaurant partner? Will there be another restaurant at the same time? 80% of the time, no. You'll be the only restaurant in the building. Some of our buildings have so many employees, Southwest Airlines, Goldman Sachs, uh, actually the Vistra Energy Building in Irving. Um, I send two restaurants to Goldman Sachs and Vistra Energies per day. As I mentioned earlier, Southwest Airlines has five buildings with us. We send anywhere from eight to 10 restaurants to Southwest Airlines Monday through Thursday. So Southwest Airlines is actually the biggest cafe space that FUDA has in the whole entire country. Uh you may have already mentioned this, but is it just a lunch thing or is there after hours that or breakfast that also are being handled? Good question. Um, our breakfast pop-ups are usually a temporary thing. Um, most of the people who say, hey, I want breakfast, realize 
not a lot of people purchase breakfast. So the breakfast programs that we have, yes, we've done before and we're doing one right now, but I've already been told that the one that we opened last week, they want their final day to be next week because they have to pay guarantees for these breakfast programs as well. And when they're paying too much guarantees out, the programs don't last very long. Dinner programs, we are partner with um, a uh, two places. One of them is a hospital, a Medical City Plano. Um, we do dinner service there actually seven days a week. Uh, so Sunday through Saturday. Um, their dinner programs, I'm going to be completely honest with you. You get paid essentially the guarantee every single time you go to the Medical City Plano dinner program. Why? Because the people who are left on site in the Medical City Plano are the ER staff. Sometimes the ER staff has time to come and get food. Sometimes they do not have time to come and get food. Our average um, amount of meals that we sell there per night range anywhere from 17 meals per night to 35 meals per night. And that's about the um, biggest night that we've had so far is that. Second place that we do dinner service is actually not too far from here, um, General Motors Plant in Arlington. We do the dinners and lunches over there. Um, and if you want to go over there, I highly encourage it. it. It's good money. However, you have to get an extra insurance policy just to enter the building, which extra paperwork for that site. If you're curious about that site, let me know. I'll send you the extra paperwork that you have to fill out. You also have to go over there and watch a training vi video um, that lasts about 30 minutes. It doesn't take you too long, but sometimes for some reason that training video stops people from entering the building. Once again, I'm a woman of honesty and I will answer all of your questions 100% honestly. <laughs> Hello. So I'm the, my name is Tamika. I'm the owner of Kinsley's Ice Cream and Funnel Cake Parlor. Nice to meet you. I have a question. So my question is, do y'all have a, um, let me see how I can say it, a person that survey how much food costs? I'm going to be honest. Food is very expensive. No, I understand. So mm -hmm. y'all have someone to like go out and, you know, the cost of food because I, for us, yeah. we sell the funnel cakes and ice cream, but we actually took our food off the menu because it's so expensive. Right. So we don't want to be in that category. We'll let the other people handle that. Yeah, absolutely. So once again, I can tell you the two stipulations that we have about pricing. Uh, number one, uh, no matter what, it can't be more than what you sell in, in store in-house, right? So let's say that your in-store in-house is um, 13 bucks for whatever it is. If you raise that to thirteen fifty in store, you can reflect that raise in your food of prices as well. Um, no problem. I just have to tell my sites, hey, what you're getting is the same what, what you would get in the store. Um, second thing is it can't be more than, there's not an um, item on your menu that can be more than $14.50, $14.99. Um, and that's not just because of me. That is because my sites, T-Mobile won't let you in the building if you have something more than $14.99. Uh, PGP Group won't let you in the building if you have something more. Price down. Just give me Just a lot of my phone. Take the kids down the I got you. Because we have homemade ice. Yeah. So. Portion size is a great way to um, go around this problem, right? So I have some sites that they do dinner portions. Everything is a dinner portion for them. When I meet with them, I encourage them to, hey, that's just a lot of food for lunch, right? These are lunch programs the majority of the time. Just decrease those those portions a little bit. Say if you want some pricing, get you down below $15. Uh, will the city of Fort Worth have, um, I guess, uh, the vouchers to help their employees with their meal or not? So that's one thing I did run into in Harris Hospital. Didn't nobody want to pay over $10. If it was $11, all oh, they dropped it in. Walked out. It was. It was it's fat. Yeah. Currently, we don't have a subsidy program, but if that's something the Fort Worth City Hall ever wants to do, they're more than welcome to partner with us to develop a subsidy program. Well, we have to look at you here. We started in March. Yeah, we've we've been in this building for about two, three months now. Yeah, yeah. But they are good. That sort of thing. But certainly through this, through sorry. Oh, okay. Thank you. So currently we do not have a food subsidy program. We've been operating since March. Um, that vision might change, but that is not currently the case. I'd love it if you encourage them to do a subsidy. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Once again, I am a woman of honesty. <laughs> I'm just kidding, Greg. All right. No worries. You guys take your time. So we have pickup prices compared to our delivery prices. 
is our delivery prices acceptable just because it covers the cost of like transportation but it's still less than our like uber and doordash prices this is a great question um for chick-fil-a specifically um and the two that i've worked with before in the past you guys have a separate catering menu um and some of the prices are actually lesser than what you guys sell in store because of things like no fries for some of your combo plates if that is the menu that we're working off of then yeah absolutely we can use that menu okay because I know you guys don't bring your fries to our food events. You guys bring chips. And so sometimes for some of this stuff, the chips fluctuate the price. And so since that's not something offered in store, that's something that's only offered through the Chick-fil-A catering um, menu. That's the menu we utilize. That would be a, we'll have a private discussion about that one. Um, as far as um, how often uh, we're used, um, I mean, how many people do you have in your program currently? Um, we're using, I use them weekly, um, bi-weekly, uh, at different locations of, you know, you kind of sign on from Monday through Friday. Absolutely. Great question. So, um, we have about 40 different sites, 40 plus different sites in our food program. Right now, I currently have about 78 restaurant partners. Um, the average for restaurants right now who, and these are the partners who are the most, um, okay with range. Let me also say with that. So they're willing to go anywhere in DFW. Um, they get around an average of eight to 10 events per week. Um, so that's, I mean, not per week, per month, eight to 10 events per month. So that's about two to three events per week. Um, and let me also preference this by saying, if it's a holiday, these offices close down, which usually means they tell FUDA to not do any kind of FUDA service. Um, so a lot of times, for instance, um, July 4th this year fell on a Thursday. There are some sites that just said cancel the whole entire week. We know no one's going to be in the office all of July 4th. And there are some sites that just said, hey, just cancel Thursday, cancel Thursday, Friday, things like that. So one, it depends on the day of the year. Um, two, <laughs> some months I have a lot of um, holidays, some months don't. Um, but the average right now is eight to 10 per month, about two to three per week. Any questions? What I'm saying is if it's Christmas time, if it's December, there's not as many to go around during December, November. I think that is all of the time we have today and all of the questions we can take. I'm going to be standing up here to the side. Uh, I'm your person to come to if you have questions about um, specifically the food program in DFW. And as the person to have questions when it comes to documentation, uh, feel free to come and talk to us. Thank you. Can I help us give a round of applause to Anna and Natalie?